right, excellent. Afternoon. Every adult was once a child. So let me start the show this afternoon by saying Happy Children's Day to us all. To us yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Happy yeah. Children's Day. We were we should have brought lolly yeah, for we are parents yeah. children of course all right welcome <laughs> to yet another exciting educating and entertaining show on live television today this is the show where conversations are real and yet it's real talk with kike my name remains kike lomatandao and i'm so excited today because you know today is children's day oh, i think yes. you should just try to you know to be a child to be a child yes. a little bit but of course <laughs> i have my exciting co-host my aunt mm, mm. they say they don't say hi <laughs> How are you doing, Efo? I'm great, Kike. Good to see yeah. you. Good afternoon, Vera. It's good to have you on Real Talk with Kike. You're in for a bumper show today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Welcome. All right. That's nice. <laughs> I'm All right, me too. I'm going to say excellent afternoon to everybody. Yes. Thank you for joining us. The child in you. The conversation today will be very childish. You know. <laughs> 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 so, all right, you know, call it Children's Day special, call mm -hmm. it Real Talk with Kike, call it whatever you want to call it. Yes, Kike loves sir. children, Lola loves mm -hmm. children, Epo yeah. loves children. You are permitted today to call it, name it. Any 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 name that comes to mind, especially yeah. when it comes to the today's because episode, children, it's all about it. the future of our children. And today we'll be having you know quite a number of different segments when it comes to different areas of our children. But um, I think it's important for us to quickly listen to on this day in history. Yeah, Please something always us. happens. Yeah. <laughs> This day in history, 27th of May, 1967, exactly 54 years ago, General Yakubu Gowan announced further subdivision of Nigeria into 12 states. This includes subdivision of the eastern region, which will undermine its political power. This further paved way for the 36 states we have and the geopolitical zones we have today. On this day in history, what's the submission? <laughs> <laughs> on this day in history, is, um, it's amazing how we have evolved as a nation, you know. Only for you to know that, you know, the, the country was broken into 12 states and we grew to 36 states. Mm. And God in heaven knows how many more states we're going to have in the future. Nobody wow. knows. Anything can happen in Nigeria. Well. You know, so question now is, even with, Nigeria being 36 states, what have we achieved? Mm. <laughs> what have Let's we achieved? Focus. Because some of those states are not viable. Mm. They're not. Mm. So, you know, I was just going to pick up from there that okay. some states are really, I won't call it unnecessary, but we need to amalgamate some states as in add them up together because mm. standing on their own, it's not really giving us what we want. So even if we had kept it at 12 states, maybe it would have been nicer. Exactly. But now that we've broken it into fragments, can we solidify it again? Mm -hmm. it you possible? never know. You don't know when anything this can happen. With everything that is happening <laughs> while the Yoruba nation are calling for their yes. own. And the behalf that people are that saying That means Nigeria is disintegrating. So maybe Lagos State and Nugu State could happen. decide to say they want to merge. Or Lagos State can decide to say they want to stay by themselves. Let's... Uh -huh. They are big enough. We'll see how it We're goes. We're big enough. Yes. We're big enough. We'll All see right. how it goes. For people like us, we are from the San Nicolo who is that so time. Oh, God. God. You're, You're so okay. proud of that. <laughs> Kike is so proud of that heritage. She needs to go down. Hey, you know, and she calls it fool, you know. Oh, yeah, before we get to our discussion today, it's important for us to take a message from our sponsors. Been listening. Stay with us. The show is in two parts today. We've got two young persons that will speak on the topic child Right at and they have Raphael and Sherifat. I think Raphael Ikuyimu, Ikuyimu, and Sherifat more. They would come here to pronounce their last name properly. I, yeah. I apologize. Uh, let's take a quick look at our profile. Please stay with us. To be right back. All right, many thanks for staying with us. Of course, we have Raphael Ikuyimu. Did I pronounce that name well? 
Yes, she's a child rights advocate and executive director for Preach a Child Initiative. He was also a one-day governor of Lagos State. He will be telling us a lot about that. And of course, our second segment, our uh, second guest today is the incumbent speaker of Lagos State um, Ch Children's Parliament. That's Sherifat Ummo. Uma. 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 Both will be discussing the topic on Child Rights Act. It's nice to have you both in the studio yeah. today. How do you feel? You know, 18 years ago, Nigeria adopted the Child Rights right. Act, and that was during the administration of President uh, Olusha Gobasanjo. But it's rather strange that since then, <coughs> not all the states have, you know, uh, you know uh, domesticated uh, the law. So, you know, as at the last um, court, only 25, uh, 25 out of the 36 states have implemented it. So states like Ke Kebi, Kanu, Katsino, Bauchi, Yobe, you know, Adamawa, and a whole lot of them like that are yet to jump uh, on the train of helping children have access to better things in the society for implementing um, this law. So, you know, a, re a report also uh, came by um, UNICAF, which shows that Nigeria ranks high in the number of child uh, marriages in Africa, with an estimated number of 23 million girls and women married off in child mm -hmm. uh, in, in their childhood. So today we will be having a conversation within the young minds with us, you, you both in the studio, on different areas of the Child Rights Act uh, and how to create a better future for you, for you guys. So my first question to you, I think before I start, let me say that I'm proud of you both. That, and I commend the Lagos State government for having, uh, for, uh, to, have, to have made such a welcoming uh, inclusion for you children in the state for, for you guys to practice what we understand as human rights and especially when it comes to legislative contribution to the growth and, uh, and to the growth and development of uh, the affairs of the children. And of course, you've, um, you've represented them well. I think before I ask you my first question, so I don't keep talking, let me allow my colleague uh, Lolo to be the one to ask the first wow. question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, um, it's an honor to be, uh, to see the both of you and I'm so Thank happy you what you're much. doing. Let's talk about youth and leadership. What's your idea of leadership? Because you've been opportune to, you know, be champions on particular causes. What would you say is your take on leadership? In, well, we're, if we're going to look at it based on Nigerian context. Okay, thank you very much, Ma, for having me. It's a pleasure to be in your midst. Um, I remain myself, Rafael Ikuyemino. Um, for me, leadership is the ability to, to um, take decisions and make steps for the good of not just yourself, but for the people around you. It starts with the consciousness that um, you, do not, you do not live for yourself. Um, it, is, it is beyond being in a position of power. Leadership is first a state of selflessness, all right? Seeing yourself as someone that is meant to be an impact to your immediate environment, all right? So it starts from then, then it, it grows into, you know, then living for others, putting yourself on the line just to make people become better. And in doing so, you, are, you would develop yourself in the process and you would, you would become better. I, 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 like you, I like to link it to the scripture that says, seek it first the kingdom and every other thing shall be added. Now, the, the kingdom, there is no kingdom without people. What makes a kingdom is the people living in it. So when you seek how to help people, how to make people become better and make their lives become better, Every other thing that we chase out for on a daily basis, the wealth, the fame, and every other thing shall be added on You know, I like this um, te the, the, the textbook definition and understanding. Would you say that the leadership in Nigeria explains what you just um, interpreted no, for us? It doesn't. You know, the... It's a far cry. <laughs> <the> <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is far, it is far different from it. You know, the general perspective of leadership is being in a position of power where you control and then you rule and all of that. But it, it's time we started um, shifting our ideology of the term leadership to, first of all, selflessness. All right, so that is my take on it. All right, many Thank thanks you. for that Thank submission. And I think Brilliant. it's important for me to bring you back to what the focus of 
to this show is which is child rights act mm -hmm. so what does it mean to both of you because this question i'm directing it to both of you and what are the privileges that it has given you in terms of the prote protection of you guys and your and other children in the state uh, sherifat let me start with you um, good afternoon everyone good afternoon. i remember my own myself Omar Sherifat, a.k.a. Madam Speaker. Hey. Hey. We got a fun chest hey. with respect on the I'm name. I'm the current Speaker of the Lagos State Children's Parliament, like you know. Well, it's a privilege to have been blessed with unique homo sapiens in this country, or let me say Lagos State to be precise, giving we, the students or the children, the privilege to partake in things affecting us, or things we know will be of up, or things we know we can do for the development of our country or our state, to be precise. So I see this as a privilege because, let me say, um, when I was inaugurated as the sixth speaker of the Lagos State Children's Parliament, I never knew there was anything called Children's Parliament. I knew I was just participating in the competition from one state to another. In fact, reading all nights for the competition. Well, it's a privilege to be the speaker. And I see it as an opportunity for us to voice out, to say things we know can be beneficial to the students and bring their, voice of the, bring their voices because we are representing them and everything that we do must be in favor of those that are less privileged. So that's what I see. Like it's, a, it's indeed a very, very privileged because I don't even know how to express myself, but I know I'm very, very happy being the speaker of the Children's Party. All right. Mm -hmm. Many thanks for that. Sorry, I am FO on yes. this. You know, given your involvement at the Children's Parliament, just like you've emphasized now, you know, what, what are the what are the limits and the restriction that you can say that you it has as in in terms of exercise when it comes to the right of the child in the state? What are the restrictions you think that you face and you think that is stopping you from um, your deliverables? Okay. Let me let me just put it this way. We might have some project or let me say things we want to pour out, things we want to do for the less privileged, but there are some certain restrictions, you know. <laughs> no matter what you do, you have to look. The, you have to look at your coordinators. If they do not give you the go ahead, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm just seeing it like probably we are being denied to execute most of the things we want to do. Not like they are not telling us not to participate or do what we want to do. But before we can do them, it will take um let me say a a lot of effort. Hard work, dedication, writing letter, going year and year for Approvals. us to make yes, mm -hmm. for us to make sure that that program is successful. I see it as let me just put it this way: like we are being, like we are inside our shells, like mm -hmm. we are not able to express, express ourselves very, very well. So I'll be very, very happy if that will be looked into. Whether I will be given the privilege to do anything, if that thing will be very, very productive. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Can you? In just one s in sentence, just tell us. You're talking about the bottlenecks, you know, in um, uh, the structure of uh, leadership. You know, just pinpoint one particular thing because the governor is probably listening to you at this point, or maybe those in charge of the ministry are listening to you at this point. Just say it exactly the way it is because this is real talk. We kick it. Don't be afraid of anything. We're all here to make what it work. What would you want to see done what, better? Like what exactly? What is that bottleneck? What's holding you back from expressing okay. yourselves like you said? There was this um, group I created on WhatsApp. Okay. I named the group Voice of the Voiceless, mm -hmm. whereby um, mm -hmm. we have the parliamentarians and non-parliamentarians because we can come together to bring ideas and hear from those that are not from the parliamentarians. Okay. But there was a day someone was asking me this question, Sherifat, we are you the one that, let me just say, you guys come together to just pick a leader. Were you the one that named yourself Madam Speaker? In fact, I was very shocked. So you've never heard about the word children's parliament. Though it's not very, very, let me say, people don't really know about what they call children's parliament. Okay. In fact, let me say, only 5 or 10% of the students of Lagos State know that there is an existing parliament. There so if the government can just help us by, let me say, publicizing the children's parliament, mm -hmm. giving us the privilege to go to schools and, let me say, talk to them mm -hmm. about the Based children's about parliament. Yes. Tell them that there is a body that is representing them for yes. them to look into the problems they are facing. I'll be very, very glad if that will be looked into because 
as I then I was shattered. I don't know the exact um, answer to give that person. Mm -hmm. The person that was asking, was I the one that named myself Madam Speaker? I, in fact, people don't really know that being the speaker, in fact, it's not an easy tax. So. <laughs> Tell easy us tax. about they, it. They don't, they, don't, they don't really want to know that before I became the speaker, it was very, very tough for me, but all thanks to God because it was okay. because of his glory, because of his, um, well his good works. But well done. People so well need done. to know that well there's a children's well fire. So, well so you've, we've listened to Sharifa at um, Dospa with a lot of uh, revelation that she has shared with us. Yes. So what developments and what provisions do you look forward to seeing going forward to the existing legislation and support for children across Nigeria, not just yeah. Lagos states? Okay, um, first of all, I would like to establish the fact that um, the, child's, the children's parliament is, is a step in the right direction because it is, it is um, part of the participation rights of children. Now, the Child's Rights Act can, can be enshrined into four baskets. We have the development rights, the protection rights, the survival rights, and then the participation rights. Yeah. And this um, children's parliament is, is, um, is connected to the participation rights of children, which is children participating in government and decision making. Mm -hmm. And then, um, first of all, having it domesticated in all the best states would be, a, would, be a, would be a thumbs up to the government because um, we hear cases of children being molested and abused on a regular and daily basis. And you, fi you find out that the awareness is not even there that because um, laws, and it cannot be laws cannot be enforced if they don't exist, mm -hmm. all right? So if being demonstrated by the rest of the state, okay, then there is something to enforce. The reason why children are being abused and nothing is being done about it is because the laws are not even there to be enforced. So I think mm -hmm. it is the first step. And then, um, the children parliament should go beyond being a ceremonial body. I, I think um, I think there is so much that you because I I I am the fifth speaker of the Lagos Children's Parliament, so I know I I understand what it means to be a young person trying to create a change. All right, children. I'm no longer a child, but then <laughs> yes, I'm not. <laughs> hello, I'm no longer a child, but then there is something. There there is there is something characterized by childhood, and that's the ability to dream and create pictures and create a future that 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 is that is beyond the extra the extraordinary and i think the average nigerian child is being limited in terms of the ability to dream mm -hmm. all right because um there is this general perception that um, a child is is ignorant is naive he does not know his left from his right from his right so um he or she cannot cannot take steps or make decisions but i stand to correct that notion because i i have been there before and i knew the things that was I, that that were running through my mind the initiatives and everything that that, that they were going to now so if only we had the platform and the opportunity to express these gifts and express these things that we have inside of inside of us i think um nigeria would be at a better level than it, than it is today right. because in a couple more years these children will become teenagers and the next they'll become youth and then they'll become the leaders of this country Absolutely. and there is no better time to start pushing them and training them and give them platform than now all right many thanks how old are you again I'm 20 years old. 20 years old. Right. We'll go on a quick <laughs> break and return after a word from our sponsors. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. The show is Real Talk. And, you, and I would like to remind you all that you can be part of this conversation by calling our studio line 80 eight zero nine eight eight seven seven four. 77400 and it's showing on your screen right now and also you can make comments on our social media platform we are live on real talk with kk youtube and facebook page and of course on silver Bed uh, youtube page we're streaming live you can also be part of this conversation please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube page real talk with kk so mm -hmm. listening to both of you thus far i can say that i'm truly proud of you guys but according to section five um every child has a right of freedom of association and peaceful assembly in conformity, conformity, conformity with mm. the law in accordance with necessity or the necessary guidance and direction of 
his parents and the guidance. So how, how, how do you how do you want to advise all the children out there on how not to abuse their freedom of association and setting a good example for themselves? Because earlier you were talking about how children need to take ownership in terms of knowing their left from right, but quite a number of them do not also understand the direction without the, the guidance of their parents. Mm -hmm. How do you think they need to move forward? Well, um, I think there is so much our parents can do because um, they would only train us and that is based on the level of experience and knowledge. But then I think it starts from a sense of higher purpose and calling for the child because um, very often than not, you will relate to people and situation based on how you see yourself. So if you see yourself as a global change maker, as a, a leader, so to speak, you will tend to, um, you would not react to things in a normal or rude or harsh way. Um, so I think it's first is a self-perception, how you see yourself determine how you re react to people and certain things. Regardless of the environment you're born in, I, I was born and bred in a, in a JP All right, so that is one of the most important born in, in Lagos, all right? So regardless of where I was coming from, I knew that there is more to my life than where I am currently, all right? So that gave me a sense, it gave me a shift. So it determined um, the association that I created for myself, the things that I had to do, and with the help of God and the grace of God, he has put me in places, in spaces where I can explore my gifts and my potentials, and we are still in the journey, and I give all the glory to God. Mm -hmm. So we, it, it starts from, you know, a sense of higher purpose first for yourself then it will reflect in the way you react to people wow, and things very excellent very i like the way your, your your thoughts are channeled i would like to talk to the lady you know we've had a lot of cases of abuse in recent times and the girl child seems to be the focus do you think we have enough laws you know to stop this from happening or do you think that is the parents that have issues or do you think it's the children themselves or the girl children? What is your thoughts around on things um, around this um, um, issues? There is this saying that um, for every problem, there's always a solution. But I think the very big mistake we all are, ma we are making now is we don't really know our rights. Hmm. We That's don't know starts. what we are entitled to. We don't know what we are enjoying as a student or a citizen of this particular country. Because fine, you are a girl child, you are being molested. Because if you are the person that knows what you are supposed to do, what you are entitled to, or the right you are expected to enjoy, once you know everything, it will be very, very easy for you to, let me say, report to the police. Well, it is obvious, let me just say, this our country is really corrupt. Yeah, that's just the perspective. Because how could a child, a girl child, being molested, go to report to someone he or she can confide in. And on getting there, the person might, might be like, well, don't worry, let's just leave that person. Let's make sure that that matters dies there, yes. which is not supposed to be done that way. Because I can use myself as an instance. Okay. I'm not supposed to say this, but it has been boiling in me for so long, and I've never gotten someone to confide in. Let me just say, like, I play football. Okay. And most of the coaches, they usually let us know that as a female, if you want to become successful in this football, you have to do some things. In fact, I was like, oh, probably we have to pay money yes. before yes. you can, mm -hmm. let me say, travel out from this country. But okay. I was shocked on, knowing, on finding out that no, they say wanted, they want this is some. real talk. Yeah, I yes. understand. So what it, exactly did they say at that point to you? Wow. Yeah, they want to have you are live TV. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you are live TV. Yeah. Say it so that you, we can curb this You have to, issues. You have, you have to have sex with the coach ha. before you can. <laughs> it's oh, actually shit. like it's mentally really It is. That was one of the main reasons that made me, uh, let me say, draw back, back. Draw them back. Draw back from putting more energy like the way I used to play football because I was let me say I was talented with it. I never started training. I just started I just started from somewhere from playing let me say plastic around mm -hmm. around the street mm -hmm. the street. Then I discovered that I can do better if I go to training. Then I started by going training, going to Ghana to play football and 
from there, in fact, I was molested. I, at times, my coach would beat me, telling me that you have to do this, you have to do that. You would even be using, let me say, the captain um, post the to, to be telling me, see, if you do not do this, you will not be the captain. If you do not do that, you will not be the captain. And I was like, but do you are think, do you, to... uh, you know, when we make these accusations, is it that they, they, they are begging your, your, your understanding or they think you cannot speak for yourself? Yes. Then, if not, because I was, let me say, I was this positive-minded person. Because there is no way, no matter how you try convincing me, if I know this thing is going to be productive, this is the thing I know is right, no matter how, it will be very difficult for that person to, let me say, kind yes, like yes, 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 that. yes. So then... Yeah. I called is this person, is, he was one of my teachers in secondary school. He was the only person, though he's a man, he was the only person I told about it. In fact, he was the one that told me, he said I should stop playing football. But then the passion I had for football, mm -hmm. like, I don't even know how to express it. Because if I did not play any ball for a particular day, the kind of weakness I will have, the kind of, let me see, the kind of feelings I will have among my peers is not really there. But as of then, I started, let me see, my game started draw, uh, falling. Like, at times, I will play, I will fall down, and all the thoughts keep, let me see, coming on my mind. I mind. don't even know how to explain, not until I came, like, I came back from Ghana. Then my, me and my principal had the cancer. I was like, you went to Ghana for a whole section. You were not in school. You were not, like, you were not um, having um, classes with your classmates. So then, I wanted to go back, because I came back to Nigeria to do some things. A teacher of mine actually called me and let me say she um counseled she you. counseled me sherry you know um for one to become successful do it's always good to let me say exhibit your talent and find more things to do about it but you know that education comes first mm -hmm. so i was like he was you can just um make sure you have your junior um senior certificate your yx certificate then from there you can go and continue with your football so i had to stop that was when I went for the Lagos State Children's Parliament competition. That was when I won the speaker. My principal was even the emphasis that, had it been you were still in Ghana? You wouldn't have been able to make this. Yes. So then I was like, if I go to Ghana now, like I, in fact, I have much to say. Uh -huh. I have the privilege because wow. I am already the speaker and I know those I can call that will be of help on signing that stuff. In fact, I've been planning to do some things, but... You have, yes. you have to get on it. You have to get on it. So, Sherry Fat, many thanks mm. for sharing um, your personal story with us about some of the restrictions yes. that um, a girl child faces, especially when it comes to um, dealing with the adults around them and that can give you restriction when it comes to you also developing yourself. But I must ask, you know, while you were speaking, you were talking about how you confided in your coach. Mm. And I, I, I'm curious to know the kind of relationship you have with your mother, with your parents? Did you ever so share um, so the, the such story with your mother? And if not, why? Is it that you don't have that kind of close relationship with your parents? I, I have a close relationship with my parents. But then I was ignorant. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really cancelled because I know if I should just tell my mom concerning this, she, she would say I should stop playing football. And I was determined then to really go places without my parents. So on getting there, it was... Uh, a PhD teacher in my junior school is a man. He was the one I told. It was, I don't know. There was a time I had a, um, a problem with my Facebook. So I told him about it. Then he helped me log in with his phone. And after logging in, he saw some of my chats. So when he asked me, like, concerning this stuff, in fact, I wanted to lie to him that this wasn't the way it is. This was the way it was. So then I had to start hiding myself in my shell. Then I discovered that if you have something within you that is bothering you, if you fail to tell someone, you are just like a driver, driving with no specific direction. So then I had to tell the man concerning everything that I know is bothering me. There was even a particular... Have you, have you, have you cited the man since then? Have you seen the man since yeah, then? Yeah, in fact... And how did you feel when you saw the man? It was like it was a privilege. We do confess. He was my teacher in the secondary school. He was my teacher, so I used to tell him concerning the things I'm facing when so, I was um, even in charge. So he actually cancelled me. Though people were like, "Why?" Like the close relationship then, it was obvious. People were like, "Ah, why am I close with this person?" But within me, 
they don't you know, know why. what I'm achieving. I'm sorry, I need telling... to interject. This molestation you're talking about happened in Ghana. Not yes, in not Nigeria. Not in Ghana. Not in... It's okay, happened it here also in happened here. Yes. So, right. we, mm. when, uh, come on it and call it an African thing. Yes. So that mm. at least when we're looking for solutions, we... Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I, I think this leads me to the next question. I know quite a number of times we concentrate on the girl child. Mm. And the male child is equally important as well. And the sure. rights, you know, there is a section, a section 10 in Lagos State that backs the right of the child. You know, no child should be subjected to physical or mental or emotional injury or what's it called, abuse, neglect or maltreatment and including sexual abuse as well. So with the level of insecurity, adoption of um, students going on and sexual abuse all over the world, I don't want to just say Nigeria alone. What, yes. state, what, what do you have to say regarding the government and the authority right now when it comes to leadership and the protection of the children? Well, um, frankly speaking, the government is not doing enough because yeah. uh, we still have these cases on the rise. And it, 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 is, it, is, it is alarming with the cases of, you see people wear nice clothes and then they're walking on the road, but you, you cannot tell what they are going through in, in their homes, in their houses. And um, with the COVID-19 and lockdown and everything, these things have actually skyrocketed and it's, it, is, it, is, it is preposterous what is actually going on. So I, I, for me, I think what the government can do, mm -hmm. first of all, is create the awareness, the enlightenment that these children have rights, all right? We've been talking about, we've been talking for quite a while now that it should be inculcated in primary and secondary school curriculum. curriculum. The Child's Rights Act should be inculcated in their curriculum. But I, I guess it's in the pipeline, but we're yet to see it into, into effect. Um, because um, the, you, 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 cannot, you cannot enforce what you don't know. So it, the awareness has to be there. They need to be educated on their rights. So that when, um, and when an abuser is, is coming or trying to play tricks on them, they are aware that, okay, this is what this person is trying to do, and they need the necessary actions to take, the necessary steps to take, mm -hmm. all right? But um, because if you check most of these abuses, case, abu case of, cases of abuse, you'll find out that the, these children that are victimized, they, they're not aware, all right? The, the awareness is not there that, okay, this is, this is wrong. Because one, one of the major things that the abuser would do, the abuser would try to put it to you that it is your fault. That what, um, this thing that happened to you, it, you, are the, you are the cause of it. That's why you, you hear cases of you wearing um, indecent dressings. Or um, they, will, they will find a way to put it back to you. So the awareness is the first thing that has to be done. It should be inculcated in this curriculum. And then the Child's Rights Act should be fully enforced in all levels, in all levels, the state government, the federal government, and the local government level, it should be enforced. All right, many thanks for that submission again. Thank mm. you so much, Sharifat and um, Rafael, for being on it's the show pleasure, today. It's an honor to have both of you, especially with what you're doing thus far. I'll say Thank well done. Much. And um, I was going to ask you a personal question because you're a funky Elijah. But because there's no time, <laughs> no I have time. to wrap up. We've got a quick break and return after um, a, a word from our sponsors. Please stay with us. You don't want to miss this. All right. Welcome. Uh, many thanks for staying with us. And of course, we have to feature the orchestra group of Grain School, Lagos, Nigeria. They were adjoined the best orchestra at the Museum, Cent uh, Museum Music Competition in 2020. And Ayomi uh, Kwasi will be opening the floor for us today. Ayomi Kwasi, open floor for you. Good afternoon, esteemed viewers. Happy Children's Day. My name is Ayami Percy Jimmy Adetono, and I am from, I'm a student of Grange School. The Grange Orchestra will be presenting five songs. Olonro Awa Oke, Obladi Oblada, Nigerian Song Medley, Gospel Medley of the Song of the Soldiers and Conquerors Awi, and Medley of Oh Be Careful, Oh When the Saints and Guantanamera. Please enjoy as you listen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
creating time to be here and of course i must give kudos to the um tutors as well yeah. you know you guys are doing a wonderful job well thank done. you for educating them thank you for creating time to teach them about the importance of instrument the importance of music may god continue to bless the work of your hands Amen. and i pray that you children one day you'll be at the position where you will impact other people after you 
well done uh, uh, Ola Posse and the rest of you all. I think this is where we'll come to the end of today's episode. It's been great to, you know, to say that we've had a wonderful segment. Yes, yeah. We've had different parts of the segment. Excellent. And uh, I must say that my co-host and I, and of course, Raphael, Sheriff, and the peoples of Grain School made today's Children's Day uh, episode truly special. And you guys did a wonderful job. Again, wonderful. you made today a wonderful <laughs> memory that we can never forget any time soon. Ever. Yeah. Uh, I think this is where I draw the curtains of today's show. Uh, but before I go, I think I just want to say that our our our, ed our editor, as I said, our editor, our producer, producer. will be leaving us to another um, news house. And I want to say that we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. I know you joined us a bit um, late, but I must say that it's important for you when you work with people who understand your vision. You work yeah. with people who are also patient. And you also work with people who can also tap into what you stand for, mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to power of character. On that note, I wish you the very best in all your endeavors. You will definitely be missed. I will miss you. And that, and I will say, before, <laughs> let's scream, happy children!